cross size scripting or XSS. This vulnerability will actually blow your mind. You can execute any code into any website you want. It's scary, isn't it? It's such a big vulnerability that if you find it in any of the bug bounty programs, you will be awarded a huge, huge bounty for it. So, let's get started. Are short me? short me? Acha, okay. So, let's get started. Okay, so this is the theory part of the video. Here I'm going to tell you what cross-site scripting actually is and how it works. So cross-site scripting as it is written, cross-site scripting attacks are a type of injection in which malicious scripts are injected into trusted websites. Now I'll be able to explain it better once we do the practical version, but still to give you a rough idea, I'll tell you what it is. There are three types of XSS vulnerabilities. One is the reflected and the other is the stored. We won't be talking about the DOM XSS in this video as it takes a lot of time and I have to do a separate video about it. Reflected XSS. This vulnerability actually happens when the website has a search bar in it. When it has a search bar, if you type anything in this, let's say I type hello, H-E-L-L-O, hello, all right? I type something in it and it gets reflected in the web page. What I type, the website is actually rendering that and it is showing it to the user in plain text into the website. That means that whatever you type in the search bar will be rendered by the database and then it will be showed to us on the website page, on the user interface page. Again, I will be able to explain it more when I do the practical version, but just to give a rough idea. So this happens when you type it in the search bar and it just reflects it back. And stored exercise is not that different. If you type something in the website right here, if you type something in the search bar, all right, it will go to the database in stored SSS I'm talking about. This happens when you write a comment or something that is permanently stored on the web page. A comment or a tweet or a post or any social media sites are mostly vulnerable to this because what you write is actually in there for everyone. Anyone who opens that page will be able to see that comment. And if you write some malicious code in that comment and if the website, if the website database renders it, everyone will be vulnerable to this exploit. So stored SSS happens in comments, in posts. So if you type something some malicious code in the comment and then you post it on the website the database renders it and then it gives it back and it reflects into the website everyone will be able to see that malicious code and that code will be reflected into everyone's systems okay for the practical version we will be solving two labs and then we'll be attending on a real world website the OWASP juice shop now this website actually is made by OWASP and it is vulnerable to all the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities so i hope you know that if you are into uh, pen testing and you are doing bug bounty you will be knowing OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities so this was made by that website and it is full of vulnerabilities just waiting for it to get exploited so i've hosted it on my terminal as you can see right here so it is hosted by node.js i've hosted it right here you can also do it i'll leave a link in the description below down below to the blog so so we'll be penetrating OWASP juice box and we'll be solving two labs to understand how it works. First, reflected XSS. I have the lab opened up right here. As you can see, there's a simple website and it's a blog post website. As I told you, XSS is generally done on blog post website and websites that have a search bar. All right. So this is reflected XSS. So as you can see, it has a search bar to search for the blog. Okay. So if I type anything that here that is actually not a blog, it will render it. And as you can see, whatever I typed, I typed that string and it got shown right here. So that means whatever I will type in that search box, it will go to the database it will check if that thing is there and it will come back and show that same string to me on my web page right so if i send some code here it goes to the database and if it gets rendered that means it has a cross-site scripting vulnerability all right so i'll show you how you go here and then you can just type an under underline tag this is html if you don't know what the u tag does it underlines the word or the string that i'm typing so i'll do the same thing i'll type u and then i'll type hello so usually what should happen this full string including the u's and including the slashes everything should be displayed right here right but see what it does i'll click on search and it'll instead it'll underline my hello that means whatever i typed the piece of code that i typed it got rendered into the database and it gave me an underlined hello okay so i'll go right here and then i'll just search so i'll just type javascript here because now i know it's vulnerable to xss whatever i'm typing is getting rendered right so I'll type some JavaScript. If you don't know JavaScript, it's very easy to learn and it's a very useful language in bug bounty. So you should learn it. So the script tag basically indicates that now I'm starting to write some JavaScript. So the HTML code will now render whatever code I type here, it'll render it as JavaScript. Here, I will type alert. Alert is a uh, JavaScript function that actually pops up alert in the website. And here, let me type uh, document, document dot cookie. So I hope you are familiar with the concepts of cookies. So what this code will do, it'll go to the database, it'll fetch down the document cookie and it'll display to me as an alert here. But type on search, as you can see, I got the website cookie right here. 
click on okay and as you can see we solved the lab so reflected access is that easy and it is very common in websites and if you find this it's a very very huge vulnerability because just think about it i was able to inject any code i wanted in this search bar right so there are many access payloads available on on the internet if you know javascript you can create your own payload as well just put it in the search in the search block and it will get affected in the website it's too easy next we have stored access i'll read the lab this lab contains a stored cross site scripting vulnerability in the comment functionality to solve the lab submit a comment that calls the alert function when the blog post is viewed so in this I, same i have to call the alert function but i have to do it as a stored access type of vulnerability i'll go on any post i'll view any post as you can see i got the comments of these people right some people wrote some comments and whatever they wrote i was able to see those comments right so if i write some malicious code if someone else opens that comment that malicious code will get rendered into their website and their computer will also get injected with that code so in the comment i'll show you how to do it in the comment i'll again write that alert function so first you have to write script script uh, for telling that it's javascript okay then here i'll call out the alert function of javascript and i'll type again document dot cookie okay so again what this will do this will again tell show me the cookie but reflected accesses were only to me i was only i was the only one who was able to render that page by myself but here if i find find a stored xss this will be able to render the code of everyone else whoever opens this website so i'll type any name uh, xyz email xyz at the rate gmail.com website we don't need website just post the comment and yeah we solved the lab because now if you go back to the blog it will show this to us and whoever goes to that blog now has that stored access vulnerability and the cookie will be shown whichever user opens that blog now so this vulnerability is huge and this can affect on many people now we'll go to the overwatch juice shop and here as you you cannot type any comments once you purchase something you can write a review after that but you can not write comments on anything but as you can see we have a search bar right here so we can try if we write hello as you can see we get hello right here because search results hello and there are no search results here so as you can see whatever we type here gets rendered into the website so we'll check if it's vulnerable to cross site scripting how oh, we'll just type underline and then we'll type hello press enter and we got it underlined in that great it's vulnerable to xss now if i get any payload i can just put it in here and that payload will be executed into the website but this was a actually a wonderful website actually made to be tested made for the people who are learning bug bounty and penetration testing like you you can absolutely use the tool i leave the github link down below how on how to install it it's a very good tool on if you're learning bug bounty and penetration testing it has all the vulnerabilities in it you can just try to exploit it you can just try to find it so now as you can see we found this vulnerability in a real website okay so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching if you liked it be sure to smash that like button down there and subscribe to the channel i post videos every week about ethical hacking penetration testing and bug bounty so if you are a fan be sure to subscribe and till that time keep hacking